V hat. That'd be some issue. We have these two conditions that have to be satisfied in order to minimize D. Right. Now, what we have here are two equations with two unknowns. So we can put this into matrix form. Right. So the matrix form is the following. We'll make this a vector. We'll put this in front of the other way. So we'll have a vector called A hat, B hat. So that'll be times the coefficients, right? times this matrix. One here, and over here we'll have x bar. Down here we'll have one, so we'll have a summation of x i squared. One times a hat. I have a, I, I left out a term here, I'm sorry. The sum of x i. Yeah, that's why they left. So it should be sum of x i. My technical philosopher. Yeah, I'll drop stuff. Oh, I don't want to get the shit or something. Yeah, okay. Well, this, this becomes the yeah. sum of x i. <laughs> well, when you multiply this matrices, this times that, we get this, and we'll multiply this times that, we get that. And that's going to equal this vector, y bar, So now it becomes a matrix equation. And now, to solve this as a matrix equation, then we'll have that A hat, B hat, will equal, we'll get the inverse of this, 1 x bar, summation of x i, summation of x i squared. G, 3, 0, 6. Now, the handwriting rapidly deteriorating here. Times y bar summation of x i is y. And that'll give us the value of a hat b hat, which will minimize d. I'll give you a demonstration of how to do this in Excel. Closer during the Vietnam War. Right? Uh, but 
the big question was well, how vulnerable are the helicopters? They're so slow, maybe the Viet Cong are going to knock them right out of the air. So I was put on that job to find out how vulnerable helicopters were. I wasn't alone. I reported to the chief of the statistician of the Stanford Research Anyway, we brought in the best people in the country. Uh, we brought in that Tuki from Princeton, who was the head, the top statistician at uh, Princeton. Uh, my boss was named was W.G. Maddow, a very, very famous uh, statistician. My job was to do the computer program. None of this was on computer. I knew how to program, but they were the, they were the big heads when it came to And so, uh, what we did, we conducted a series of experiments at Fort Bliss, Texas. And what we did is we had a dummy helicopter that was pulled by a C-47 airplane. We loaded that helicopter up with all kinds of electronics here. And we gave our trainees at Fort Bliss all different kinds of weapons. They had 45, they had carbines, they had beef, everything you can imagine. And as the helicopter was dragged in front of them, we had to shoot at it. And inside this, this dummy helicopter, we had all these recording devices. And that day, those days, we put data on tape. And then we could put it on USB flash drive. Then we put it on tape. So we recorded all the shots that were fired. Now, who fired them? You know, uh, the number of rounds that were fired, the number of hits that were made, so on. Enormous amount of data. The next step was to run regressions with all these variables in it to see if we could come up with some kind of equation that would identify the vulnerability of knocking out a helicopter. And that was my job to run the regressions. So I had to program all of this into the computer. And we did the job in record time. And my boss was delighted and gave me a 13% raise. Uh, and uh, the result was that the helicopters are very hard to hit down. If you hit one down, it's only random. At least our guys couldn't hit them. Uh, it turns out the only way to really you have an effective strategy against helicopters is to flood the air with so much lead that the helicopter would fly into the lead. That was the only strategy. And after that, the helicopter became the main weapon in the Vietnam War. That was a very interesting project. Uh, but having gained that experience running regressions, uh, the UN was very much interested, and that's how I got to work in the UN. They wanted me to come there and run regression on economies so that they could start doing economies. So my first job at the UN in 1967 was writing the regression package to two All right, let's take a look at this, uh, how we would do this in Excel. Because it's a lot easier to do this in Excel today. Put some dummy data in here. Last 
So now we have two of the numbers that we need in our matrix. We have x bar and y bar. Now we also need the sum of x on i. So let's put that in there. Where are these XIs? We need the sum of xi times y. Oh, 
Some of XI. This is the vector here, this vector here is that vector, and this inverse is over here. Now, now we can solve for alpha and beta. A hat. A hat. And B hat. I, I missed that one to get to five and three cents. Yeah, we're going to do that one. In here we're going to put A hat, B hat. What do we do? 8, 2, 5, 3, 7, 8. And that's going to be equal to the summation x, y. Matrix multiply. Summation x, y. Summation x, y. Summation x, y. Oh. 9. So. This matrix. X times y. Sum it up. Comma. Inverse. Grab that. Vector. Control shift. And then it doesn't work. A hat would have to be 1.503759. Can you just hover over that square again? No, that's all right. Uh, can you, can you hover over the A hat cell? Because I actually missed it. Because I missed one part. Can you just uh, uh, just show what the equation was in the A hat? Just like uh, just select the cell. Yeah, select the cell. Uh, and, and multiply this matrix by the top. Oh, okay, thank you. And we get them both at once. The next week I'm going to show you when we have three explanatory zeros. So you can have four. You can have any number of explanatory variables by the same principle. Now I want to show you that this is the correct answer. You got it, right? Copy it both. called data analysis. Uh, 
that for the Y range. So here's the Y range. It's going to give you the same coefficient. Oh, there you go. Control shift enter. So that's for the X range. <laughs> We have label. It's going to be the alpha shirts. Yeah. Let's put it over here. That's a slope of the line. Well, that's a slope of the line. Well, this is a linear regression, so that's just the slope of the line. <laughs> yeah. That's just the at whole, any point of the at line. At any point of the line. So A, no matter what A hat is, B hat's always going to be the same. Good marks. Yes. Well, no, A hat's, well, no. Well, A hat's always the, it's always the intercept. Do you like that? A hat will not change. This is, this is your regression equation. It's how you figure out every point of the line. I got you. Okay. Yeah. Depending on your inputs, that's how you find your time line. Whatever x is will determine so y according to this like equation. That's all. Okay. Okay. I got you. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. 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 So you do equal min verse in parentheses. Yeah, I guess that would be that. Right. Well, no, 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 no Okay. 
Now, there, select the two. Select both. No, no, no don't select that one. Select the two. Okay. Now, select the upstairs and put the people in the mall. And this is where you select two arrays. Yeah. Yes, you select first the four point oh, okay. 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 That's fantastic. I'm glad it works. <laughs> I'm glad it works. You see, the thing is, if you know something like computers and you understand other things like mathematics, you don't have to be a great mathematician or a great economist. You know computers. You're very useful to them. Because most economists do not know computers. They, they rely very heavily upon people who do. But in order to work with them, you have to understand what they're doing. You have to understand their, their equations and what they're trying to estimate. So this is what we try to accomplish in this course. Give you a job advantage. Give you a, a niche in, in the field. Almost, if you're really good at doing this kind of stuff, you get a job. I never had a day on the point in my life. I started working at 15 and I'm still working at 76. I never had to look for a job. People look for me. That's very cool. And that's what you want to do. You want to build up some kind of skill that is marketable. Whenever you run regression, you do it in constant power. In constant, right? Natural currency or dollar. It's always in constant.